Good morning, I'm back out here at the Wakarahachi Wetlands today. We're photographing with the Fuji X-H2 along with the Fuji XF 200mm 2.0 lens. I've attached the 1.4 extender that's going to make it a 2.8 at 420mm. My plans are to go ahead and photograph uh, with this combination. I do not plan to remove the 1.4 extender at all. Uh, the purpose uh, for shooting with the X-H2 today instead of the X-H2S is to see how well the camera performs uh, because of the fact that I have 40 megapixels instead of 26 and I'm hoping uh, that I can crop in and uh, make better images than I can with the smaller sensor. So getting a really good opportunity this morning to shoot in this direction. Uh, this is where the uh, sun rises from. There's plenty of cloud cover and uh, lots of birds on this side this morning uh, making for some really good photographs. So it rained uh, quite a bit last week. Uh, this place really seems uh, very lush and green right now. Uh, but it hasn't heard the uh, bird photography thus far this morning. I'm seeing a lot of activity. The skies are uh, kind of cloudy, but getting better by the minute. And as I said, uh, the nice thing about this is uh, this morning I've been able to shoot uh, in a direction that would be typically backlit, but because of the uh, cloud cover, uh, I've had a good opportunity to get some uh, good bird photography. Uh, thus far, I'm very impressed with the ability of the uh, Fuji X-H2 along with the 200 millimeter lens uh, to get on the eye of the birds. Through the viewfinder, it looks like it's working. Uh, hopefully when I get back uh, and review the photographs, I'm going to see that uh, a little bunch of these pictures are in focus. Most of the time I'm doing my bird photography using the uh, X-H2S because of the uh, speed factor and uh, supposedly it's a, a better action camera. But uh, if this camera can perform with the uh, 40 megapixel sensor, uh, I would like to uh, use it uh, much more than I have been using it thus far. I noticed this uh, hang up flying back and forth. I quickly set the camera to pre-shot autofocus, which means you're also an electronic shutter. I was able to capture these six images all perfectly sharp. So one thing that I'm really enjoying shooting with the uh, Fuji XF 200 millimeter lens, uh, even with a 1.4 extender attached to it, which converts it to a 2.8 lens, is how much brighter it is to look through the viewfinder. It uh, really makes it a pleasure to, to shoot with the camera. Uh, with this lens, uh, you kind of uh, forget how nice it is to see through a really bright viewfinder when you're shooting with those uh, 150 to 600 uh, f8 lenses or a 5.6 lens uh, it's uh, really much more enjoyable shooting with the uh, fast uh, telephoto lens i'd like to share with you a couple of things that i'm doing with the uh, fuji xh2 so the autofocus on button i have a set where i can turn on and off the uh, face and eye autofocus tracking for a bird so the ael button i've gone ahead and set that where i can do a pre-shot autofocus uh, I haven't had much of an opportunity today uh, to use it. Uh, I have used it a little bit already in the past. Uh, one thing you want to do with that is uh, don't sit on it because you're going to have a lot of images uh, if you finally do trip the shutter. What you want to do is uh, go ahead and uh, tap on it for a little bit. Uh, and if your subject hasn't done anything, let go. The bottom uh, button on the keypad, I've gone ahead and uh, programmed this button here to be my 1.4 and my 2x extender. I am shooting out here today, I, as I typically do, uh, manual as far as uh, my settings. I do have uh, the rear dial right here. So with the rear dial, I go ahead and I select my aperture. Front dial is for selecting my shutter speed. And that's kind of uh, close to the way I used to do things with the Canon when I was a Canon photographer. And uh, those are my settings for that. A lot of the times I'm shooting uh, wide open. Now why not? Uh, is that kind of a lens? Uh, so I'm trying to take full advantage of that. Even being wide open uh, to like f4 or 2.8 sometimes, I'm still having to select the fast ISO because I'm trying to keep that shutter speed up high uh, where if the subject uh, takes off or anything quick happens, I can go ahead and freeze the action. Another thing that I'm doing here today, uh, shooting with the camera, is uh, I'm using an electronic uh, shutter. Uh, it's very quiet, but not that I need the quiet part of it, but uh, it feels like the camera really performs uh, very quick. The autofocus box uh, thus far, like I said, I, I think it's performing well as far as getting on the subject and on the face. Uh, so we'll see how the images actually turn out.
So far as uh, film simulation, I'm on the standard mode, uh, which doesn't matter too much because I am uh, taking the pictures in the RAW uh, so that I can go ahead and uh, edit the pictures uh, when I get back home. I find for bird photography, uh, shooting RAW is uh, beneficial because of the fact that you're gonna end up having to work on these pictures a little bit, uh, especially depending on how the light is hitting it uh, with white birds uh, and you'll get the bottom of those wings go dark on you. So it's, it's good to have a RAW file to work on. And uh, I figure if I'm gonna see just how well this system performs, uh, I'd give the camera every uh, possibility uh, to perform as, at its uh, highest potential. And one advantage that you do have uh, with the flat lighting is that there's more opportunities uh, to stay longer and uh, photograph in many different directions. Uh, so that's one big advantage uh, when there's a flat lighting day like uh, today has been thus far. So as far as my autofocus is concerned, what I'm doing is I'm selecting single autofocus box, uh, but I am picking the largest autofocus box that I possibly can. Within that box, what I'll do is I'll place it on the face of the bird, and if it's possible, I'll go ahead and turn on the face and eye autofocus tracking for a bird. And if it's working, I'll go ahead and leave it like that. If not, I, I'll go ahead and turn off the bird and eye autofocus tracking. All right, I just spotted a rosette spoonbill. First one I see today. I've heard mentioned that there is one out here and uh, now I found one. So the time is at 10.30 in the morning. Typically by now I'd be wrapping it up, but again, as I said, due to the uh, overcast lighting, I can stick around for a while and uh, keep taking some photographs. So I went ahead and uh, replaced the battery. One of the batteries was already empty uh, for a while and I was about a quarter through on the second battery. And I managed to get about 1,126 photos uh, with one battery and a quarter of another. The way I shoot is I, whenever I can, I go ahead and turn off the camera so that I'm not eating up battery life. I've gone ahead and turned off the image stabilizer to, so that I don't deplete it uh, faster because I have the image stabilizer on. Uh, those are a few of the things that I do. I have left the camera on much more than usual today because uh, when you're doing bird photography, you kind of want the camera to be ready to go. Uh, but, you know, when I do have an opportunity where I'm walking through an area where I know I'm not going to be able to get a, a, a photo of a bird, I'll go ahead and turn off the camera. Uh, one thing about turning the camera on and off is that it's actually uh, a little bit slow to uh, uh, get back up and running when you turn it back on. Uh, thus far my experience uh, using the X-H2 for bird photography here today has been impressive. Uh, to me it really doesn't feel very different than the X-H2S does. It feels like I'm uh, acquiring focus just as quickly. Whether the photos are in focus or not, I'm going to wait to see when I go back and review them on a computer. But I'm very hopeful and optimistic. Uh, what I love about this is that, again, you have that 40 megapixel sensor, and uh, that's gonna give you a little bit better image quality and certainly the ability to crop, uh, which is something that you end up having to do a lot of with bird photography. So I'm gonna show you here uh, the bottom uh, button on the keypad. I've gone ahead and uh, programmed this button here to be my 1.4 and my 2X extender. Uh, I haven't used it a lot, uh, definitely haven't used it at 2.0 as far as I can remember. I've used it at 1.4 a couple of times. Uh, each time you go ahead and uh, turn on the uh, extender, you are making the uh, file a smaller file because of the fact that you're cropping in. Day is still uh, quite cloudy and uh, have soft light again. It's crazy just when I thought I had to wrap it up and leave because uh, the uh, sun is uh, up high. It's almost uh, noon here in Florida and uh, you know what, the uh, light quality here at noon is uh, never very good. But uh, it's gotten overcast again and it's gonna be hard to leave today. Now one thing I do on uh, cloudy overcast days is uh, those flying photographs, I try to concentrate mainly on photos where I can get the uh, background where it's trees and uh, not have those ugly white skies. So for the most part, I try to do that, but every once in a while you get excited when you see a bird flying and you take an image uh, with those uh, white sky is behind it. I've had a really good time out here photographing today with the, the Fuji system. Uh, I thought it's performed uh, really well. So you guys uh, to please uh, provide some feedback, uh, some comments, any thoughts you might have regarding this video. And uh, please like and subscribe and I thank you for watching.